Very good morning, it's Penny Wild, the Black Pen. Sunday was the 1st of May 2022, which was Workers' Day in South Africa. Again, I'd like to congratulate, I'd like to thank, I'd like to hopefully plead with the workers of this country to say, guys, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and please, please keep working harder. Uh, so many of us can do so much better. It doesn't matter if you're a cashier at ShopRite or at Pick and Pay or at Woolworths. It doesn't matter if you work at Home Affairs. It doesn't matter if you work at SARS. It doesn't matter if you work in a bank. It doesn't matter if you're a waiter or a waitress. It doesn't matter what work you do. It can be in construction. You can be a street sweeper. You can clean some of our government parks, our state parks, so to speak. Guys, please work harder. You know, if each and every one of you just respects your jobs just a little bit more, I promise that this country will be much, much better. Especially the nurses, especially the police officers and the traffic cops. Some of you guys that live on bribes. I understand why you're on bribes. I understand. We all want money. And if there's a chance for you to get a bribe, you'll obviously do so. On the other hand, of course, <laughs> for the person that is being that is paying the bribe, normally it's cheaper than paying for a fine. So they're like, look, I could pay a 500 rand fine or I could give this guy a 50 rand bribe. Obviously, I'll go for the 50 rand bribe. So I understand. But guys, we need to do our jobs better. I'm not condoning bribes by all means. That's corruption and it's sad. But even if you're collecting a bribe, please remember to remind the motorist. Remember to, to remind the person who is maybe uh, driving drunk. Please remind those people to take better care of themselves. Please remind them to stop committing crimes, to stop committing offenses. It is not fine. For the nurses, as I mentioned, the nurses, guys, please be a bit more patient with us. We know we frustrate you guys a lot. We know we understand. We're impatient. We want you guys to perform miracles. And you guys are under pressure and you deal with huge loads of work. But please help us as well. Please don't be unnecessarily rude. Please respect your jobs. But again, happy Workers' Day to everyone. I hope that you guys got to appreciate the holiday that you got on Monday. Sunday, the 1st of May, is also my son's birthday, Uzulu Khosi Mlochwa, Uzulu Gapenuel. I've documented here on YouTube my story struggling with access and visitation and having a chance to raise my son over the past nine years. He turns nine years old. I hope as he gets a bit older, he'll watch this video and he'll know that his father loves him very much and that his father thinks about him all the time been to courts i've been up and down like i said if you ever want you can go onto youtube you can search zulu Hosim lojwa i've made three videos to date that have documented my story struggling with access and visitation what i did on sunday is that i posted a tweet you know a picture that me and him took when i bumped into him by accident trying to speak to his mother's uh, father's side of the family trying to speak to his mother's mother's side of the family to try and tell them what's been going on and to try and see if they can intervene. I tried back in 2013, 2014 to speak with my son's mother's mother. Unfortunately, that didn't work. And that's why I had to go the court route. Two parenting plans later, about maybe five court appearances that the mom missed later, uh, a report from a family advocate and a social worker, and still I'm not getting a chance to see my son. But I took a picture with him. I posted that picture, wishing him on Twitter a happy ninth birthday, ninth birthday. I understand that he's young, but I'm doing this because I'm hoping that when he's old and he's looking for all of these answers, he can go onto the internet and search for his name and search for my name and he'll see all the videos and he'll see all the pictures and he'll see all the posts. My father actually loved me. My father actually fought for me. This guy didn't abandon me. He wasn't absent. He was struggling to get a hold of me. And the nice thing is, look, he has visited me a few times before. So he does have memories of me. And when I saw him in January this year, when I went to Newcastle, Wazulu, to court there to try again to get a mediation with the mom, he reminded me that he knows me. He's like, yeah, you're my baba. You're my dad. You know, I am asked him, what's his surname? He's like, Zulum Lojwa. You know, I made a video with him, which I posted as well on my social media. Very good looking boy. You know, very good looking boy. I, I wish I could just add more to his development so that like some of my other kids I've had the fortune of raising, he can be as confident, especially around me and speak up and sing with me and play sports with me and know this is my dad. This is a person I trust and that I love very much. My tweet ended up uh, going viral. 
Um, I think currently today is the 3rd of May. I think we're sitting at maybe 6,600 likes. I'm not sure how many retweets, but if you look at the impressions, an impression on Twitter when you go to the insights is basically how many people have seen this tweet. I think we're sitting at over 400,000 people, you know. So I'm going to speak about that tweet, but I don't know if it's because of the tweet or if the mom had a soft heart on the day or if my son maybe for some reason wanted to speak to me or maybe if there's a chance that his stepfather, his mother's ex-husband, maybe had spoken to him and maybe it was an opportunity to speak to his own father. But his mom called me and I got to speak to my son. I was very happy. I, I don't have an opportunity to speak to him, by the way. I've sent the mom emails. I've sent her SMSs. Unfortunately, I don't get to speak to my son. So I spoke to my son. Uh, I wished him a happy birthday. He thanked me. I asked him what he wants. He said he wants a PlayStation. I was like, I don't have money for that. But I did send him money for himself and his half-sister so that they could buy like a very nice lunch for themselves and for their family as well, that side. So I was very happy. And I did send an SMS to the mom afterwards saying, thank you very much for letting me speak to the boy. And I'm hoping that I can speak to him again soon. So I will be trying um, maybe once a week to see if I call and see if maybe they pick up. We'll see where that goes. A lot of people, a lot of people commented on my post. As per usual, when I post my story, a lot of females asking what I did because the assumption is that I must have done something to the mother for her to deny me access. Um, a lot of people saying they wish they could hear the mother's story. I wish I could as well. Unfortunately, I, I don't. And maybe people close to her will one day maybe tell her story. You know, her family has, certain people in her family have reached out to me over the years trying to help, but they've been told by the family, in particular, my son's mother and my son's maternal grandmother have asked them to please not get involved, unfortunately. So... I don't know. Maybe my son one day will be able to tell the story. The cool thing is that I have spoken to the mother's ex-husband because they have now gotten divorced. And he's been able to tell me a lot of stuff that had happened, especially him telling me about my son who loved me, who spoke about me very fondly and who spoke about his half siblings. So I got a snapshot in to the story of what had been happening behind the scenes. He was not even aware that I'd been maintaining my son because he had been maintaining my son because the mom had been unemployed. You know, so there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the back, which is kind of sad. And like I say, as much as people are asking questions, and initially I used to get upset, but I understand people want to know, right? And people, because I'm a man, the assumption is maybe I never wanted my son. Maybe I was absent. Maybe I didn't maintain. It's fine. But luckily for me, I am not that father. I've been involved since before he was born. My son was planned. We sat with the mom and we discussed having this child and we discussed how we were going to raise this child. And then things fell apart during pregnancy and after my son was born. And the sad thing is the half-sister as well is struggling with access to her dad as well, which is a very, very heartbreaking story. The kids are growing and I'm lucky that because of social media, because of people around me, I'm telling my story and my son is going to hear my story one day and he can choose. He can choose to hear my story and be like, you know what? This sounds like excuses. I don't want to hear from this guy. He can choose to be on his mom's side. It's his life. You know, it's his life at the end of the day. Or he can choose to be like, you know what, this guy tried. Let me actually reach out to him and let me try and build a relationship with him. As much as there was damage over the years, I'm now older. I'm now going to reach out to this guy and see what we can do together. A lot of guys as well also asked, what have I done? What did I do to the mom? There was a story that trended as well under my comments, which is of a lady who has been abused. Allegedly, I have to state this, allegedly abused by her ex-husband who had actually commented on my post saying that he's going through the same thing where he's struggling with access. She went and she commented and she said, this guy's lying. He has access to his child. yet He can't call his child and he's beaten me. And we're currently going through an application for supervised visits, you know? And then a lot of people went in. Some people threatened this guy. This guy responded saying that, you know, there's three sides to a story and one day the truth will come out. I don't know what's going on. But I did say to this lady that I'm very thankful that she shared her story. I'm thankful that she shared, uh, she tagged the guy. I'm thankful that she even posted her pictures. You know, in the absence of a newspaper, of an SAPC or a DSTV, social media is our platform to tell our stories. People can later on come and dispute them and say we were lying. It's fine. If you've got alternative information and facts, that's fine. But I'm telling you my story. So I appreciate her doing that. I appreciate him, I guess, as well, commenting. 
you know, and obviously people bashed him because it's a very emotionally triggering um, story to even think about. There were some debates uh, with some people asking me questions. And, you know, I also told them to refer to YouTube where I'd sent my story, where there's those three videos. I've become more sensitive to the issues. I've spoken to a lot of fathers in particular who are struggling with access. I've helped fathers gain access to the child. I've helped certain fathers gain what's called primary residence. We don't have custody anymore. The laws have changed. What you get is primary residence. That means the child lives with you, but the child always has rights to gain access to that other parent. A lot of people are saying you should go to court. Don't whine. Don't post on social media. Guys, a lot of you maybe don't understand how difficult this process is. And we're dealing with different people. Like I said, I've helped people gain access to their kids and gain primary residence. There are mothers out there who, because the issue goes to court, they, they, they bend and they let the child have a relationship with the father. There are magistrates that are a bit more strict and they force a mom or a dad to give access to the other parent. You know, some people are, I guess, what you call lucky now. But I've been in WhatsApp groups with fathers struggling. There's a, an organization in this country called Fathers for Justice. You know, it focuses on fathers who don't have access to their kids, but it also helps mothers as well because there are mothers that don't have access to their kids. Either because the father's refusing or the father's family, his mom, his dad are refusing access for this woman for whatever reason. She was unemployed and broke at some point. Uh, maybe there was fighting at some point, whatever the case may be. Guys, please understand the court process is not as straightforward as you'd like. I've spoken before that in this country, we have a legal system, but not a just, not a just justice system. There are a lot of law clerks that don't do their job where, where, where files go missing. There are a lot of magistrates that are very verbally abusive and won't help you. And if the other parent is not there, they just throw the case out. They don't follow up or ask for a warrant of arrest. I've had issues where I've gone with a court order to the police and they've refused to act on it. I understood that maybe they were scared of maybe this thing becoming wrongful arrest and they get in trouble. But the law is there and they don't implement it. Because our courts, our legal system, there are human beings that work there. And the human beings that work there are biased. We live in a society and in a world that is biased towards mothers when it comes to kids. So if they hear that a child is with a mom, they're like, well, then what's the issue? You're like, no, the issue is that we have rights. Both parents have rights. This is not the olden days where a child belongs to the mother. A child belongs to the mother and the father equally. Even if there's no money there. A lot of mothers hide behind the father doesn't have money, is broke. But now it's this one. Now you don't have a job. Your only... A uh, drawback is that, or, or, or your only standpoint is that you have the Sasa card in your possession. So the grant money comes to you. But you're just as broken and, and, and unemployed as the father. A lot of girls and their families hide behind damages. Which has made me extremely upset and angry that now a father and his family can't access a child that was made consensually. That was made consensually because of oppressive and outdated cultural practices. This girl... When they were having sex and it was nice and she was fucking horny having this child, there was no talk of culture then. She wasn't saying, no, you can't have sex with me because we're not married. She wasn't respecting her whole own family's uh, religious, uh, cultural beliefs. And now when it's convenient, please pay damages before you see your child. It's very, very heartbreaking. And it's some of these things that we need to fight and fix, you know, because we've got so many problems in society. We're unemployed, we're poor, we're struggling. And now we can't even access our own kids. And it breaks my heart that the concept of taking my child's mother to court. Why can't we resolve this between the two of us? Why can't our families sit down and resolve this between the two families? Now we have to go and get strangers. And if you don't have money, and this is a fact, if you don't have money and the other party is not willing to meet you halfway, you're going to struggle. Lawyers are going to send you to the high court. You're going to pay exorbitant fees trying to fight just to raise this child of yours that you guys made consensually at a time when you guys probably loved each other. I just wanted to touch on that. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope, like I said, as workers, you've got rejuvenated and you'll be inspired to add value in your workspace. I love you guys very much. I obviously love my son, Uzulu Khosim Lojwa. I love all my other kids. Mkunz Malang Mlojwa, Africa Mlojwa, Shaga Mlojwa, Mkanyezi Mlojwa, and my youngest, a rascal, Unyanga Mlojwa, Uskupu. Those are my children. I love them very much. And I'm involved in all my children's lives, unfortunately, except for Zulu, because I don't have access to him. 
But when my other kids have got a really, really great relationship, I speak to them, I send them money, we do things together when I'm with them. And I think some of you have seen some of the videos that I've posted on social media. Let's all do better. Let's all do better. Love you guys very much. Pin you all the black pen. Cheers.